chaos reigned in Germany during the dying days of the Third Reich. A state that held its people in an iron grip for years was crumbling and military discipline was breaking down. Enter Willi Herot, a deserter. He acquired a captain's uniform, pulled together a group of soldiers, then went on a booze-fueled rampage through Elmsland. This is his story. Willi Herold was born on September 11th, 1925 in Lutzenau, a small village in Saxony, Germany. He was a very ambitious child and prone to taking unnecessary risks, an attitude he retained his whole life. In 1935, he joined the Deutsches Jungvolk, the gateway organization to the Hitler Youth. The program was very similar to other scouting organizations of the time, except it also included rigorous political indoctrination. Willi wasn't interested in Nazism and instead conscripted the other boys into games of cowboys and Indians. This was explicitly forbidden and Willi's refusal to stop got him expelled. After leaving school in 1940, 15-year-old Hirold completed a three-year chimney sweeper's apprenticeship, but he only worked for three months before being conscripted into the Reich labor service and sent to France to help build the Atlantic War. At 18, he was conscripted into the 1st Parachute Division as a Fallschirmjäger, or paratrooper, and his cohort was one of the last to receive complete jump training. Herold got his first taste of action in 1944 in the Battle of Monte Cassino. Atop the mountain was a great abbey founded in 529 CE by Saint Benedict of Nurtia. The Allies believed the Germans were using it as an artillery observation post and called in the US Air Force to blow it up. They did, and the Germans, who had not occupied the building due to an agreement with the Vatican, emplaced themselves in the ruins. Herold was one of these men, and his unit became known as the Green Devils of Monte Cassino after inflicting horrendous casualties on the advancing allies. Herold was promoted to Gefreiter during the battle and was later evacuated after taking a bullet through the lung. He recovered and took leave at home in the summer of 1944. Back in Lunzenau, he was never seen out of uniform and sported an impressive set of war medals for one so young. Abusing the medal's authority, he took charge of a local Hitler youth group and ordered them around like his own little platoon. Many speculated Herold hadn't earned his decorations and the villagers eventually proved it. He was laughed at rather than punished and with his reputation in ruins, he left. Chaos reigned in the final months of the Third Reich. Allied armies encroached from the south and west, while in the east, a Soviet storm of retribution was thundering toward Germany's heartland. All Luftwaffe personnel who could hold a rifle, be they desk jockey or mechanic, were designated as paratroopers and sent to the front. No German units were at full strength. Most had very little food and even less ammunition. Orders weren't getting through and company level officers were largely calling the shots. Desertion was rife as untrained Volkssturmers and experienced veterans alike surrendered to the Allies in droves. Men were shot in the street for cowardice by trigger-happy officials and children were hung from lampposts for stealing food. Everything was falling apart. This was the world 19-year-old Gefreiter Herold was trying to survive in. He had been transferred to the 6th Parachute Division and deployed to the Western Operational Theatre but in mid-March, after a skirmish with British forces, became separated from his unit. Getting lost during a battle was common for German forces during this stage of the war, but it was also deadly. Any soldier found wandering alone was liable to be shot for desertion, plus there was the ever-present threat of starvation. While wandering along a road in search of his unit, Herold came across a wrecked car containing luggage. As he ripped through the suitcases looking for something to eat, he found a pristine Fallschirmjager captain's uniform. It was a no-brainer. Herold tore off his wet, filthy, ragged Gefreiter uniform and donned the captain's one, which was complete with campaign ribbons from Narvik and Crete. Once again wearing decorations he hadn't earned, Herold set off along the Dutch border toward Bentheim. 
On the way, he came across an abandoned farmhouse and searched it for a bicycle. Two senior NCOs from a different paratroop unit were inside and Herald accidentally caught them looting the place. In character, he rebuked them for not greeting a captain properly and ordered them to hurry back to their unit. When Herald noticed the men followed his orders without question, his ego swelled. However, a lone captain was just as suspicious as a lone soldier. Herald needed troops to command. At Bentheim, Herald reported to the highest ranked officer present, a major, that his unit had been badly mauled in recent fighting and he needed some replacement soldiers. The major agreed, signing command of two squads over to detachment Herald, which the major was told was on a secret mission for Hitler. The small force then made its way north to Meppen, picking up army stragglers, desperados and deserters along the way. By the time it got there, Herald commanded 60 soldiers. He was greeted warmly by the lieutenant colonel in charge of the town's defences and positively overjoyed the man when he offered to help defend the town with his entire artillery battery, including a howitzer. This was a lie. Herald had no artillery. But the lieutenant colonel didn't know. He was so thankful, he billeted Herald and his men in the best accommodation in town, held a dinner for them and provided them with ammo and gasoline. Herald was also given command of a specialized scout unit and a platoon of stormtroopers. It was here Herald was nearly undone. A pioneer captain began arresting members of so-called detachment Herald for desertion after finding their papers weren't in order. The men protested and a fight nearly broke out before Herald stepped in. He flashed his medals and acted terribly offended at the suggestion his men weren't loyal. Embarrassed at being dressed down by a man who looked like a war hero, the officer backed down. Days later, Meppen was attacked. On both April 6th and 7th, Herald led his detachment into combat against the British around Meppen. He had around 150 men under his command at this point, but lost 60 of them during the fight. Without artillery support, his men were easy targets for British tanks. The Allies took the town on the 8th, and detachment Herald retreated. In the preceding days, Herald picked up yet more desperate soldiers and launched an attack on the Allied-held town of Laten. His men had some success, but were too few to capitalize on it. Captain Herald needed a larger force. Continuing north, Herald heard from a Nazi official about a special camp for deserters called aschendorf -Hermor. This seemed like an ideal place for recruitment, so Herald led his men there. On the way, a naval officer demanded to see his papers, which Herald claimed to have lost. He was nearly taken into custody when, by sheer chance, the Lieutenant Colonel from Meppen arrived. He recognized the man as Captain Herald of the 6th Parachute Division and told the officer about his defense of the town. The man was convinced, and for a second time, Herald avoided destruction. Herald was greeted as a savior when he reached the Aschendorf and Moor camp. The commandant, Schutter, had far too many deserters to control and escapes were becoming frequent. He had requested an officer for a court-martial and now, standing before him, was a veritable war hero on a secret mission for Hitler. He begged Herold to do something about the overpopulated camp. Herold obliged. He obtained permission from the Gestapo to execute recaptured escapees, but this quickly devoured into an orgy of violence. Like hounds from hell, Herald let his band of desperados loose on the camp. They robbed the prisoners, then went on a three-day torture and murder rampage, killing 195 men. The surviving prisoners were turned loose and ordered to rejoin the Wehrmacht in a nearby town, but all chose to surrender to an advancing Polish army instead. For the next 11 days, Herald and his men went on a booze-fueled looting spree through the countryside, killing all who stood in their way. He was arrested by German police on April 30th and sent to a penal battalion, which he immediately deserted. By the war's end, Willi Herold, the executioner of Elmsland, was working as a chimney sweep in Wilhelmshaven. Days later, the British arrested Herold for stealing bread. He was recognized by a former Aschender for more inmate and put on trial for his war crimes. In 1946, they made him and Detachment Herald dig up all the men they'd murdered. At his trial, Herald said, I can't really say why I shot all those people. 
My only reason was that neither myself nor my men were enthusiastic about the war and the shootings allowed us to avoid going back to the front. When questioned as to why he put on the persona of Captain Herold, he said, I wanted to form a combat group and stop the advance of the British troops, and I succeeded. At that time, the German troops were fleeing in disorder. I was lucky enough to find other people who were not afraid of anything. With these people, I was able to carry out missions. Even if they did not influence the course of the war, they still stopped the enemy. Herold's British interrogator, Theodore Panchev, wrote, Mentally and morally, he wasn't quite put together, but in those days, that was true of many people. Basically for him, it was the biggest and greatest Cowboys and Indians game of his life, only with live ammunition on real people. A terrible shame. Under more fortunate circumstances, he would have made a damn good orderly. Herold was found guilty and executed at Wolfenbüttel Prison on November 14, 1946. He was 21 years old. That was the story of Willy Herold, the opportunistic deserter who pretended to be a captain at the end of World War II. But what do you think? How do you think he kept up the act for so long? Why do you think so many chose to follow him? What would you have done if you'd found the uniform? Let us know all that and more in the comment section below. And as always guys, thank you so much for watching and I hope you learned something new.